It's the historic meeting between Northern Illinois. What's a Saluki, you ask? A Saluki is an Egyptian hunting dog with speed. That's a good comparison to this Southern Illinois basketball team, which gets up and down the floor and certainly would love to go hunting for Blue Devils tonight. Duke, of course, has other ideas. Let's get the story from Rick Sullivan at the Rosemont Horizon outside Chicago. The Southern Salukis want to run. In order to do it well, they need to out-rebound Duke, especially on the defensive end. Ashraf Amaya is the team's leader in rebounds and points. I've been fortunate enough to have played with Cherokee Parks and Antonio Lang in the World Junior National Trial Camp. And they're very established players and they're very deserving of the credit they receive, but it's not like anything. It's not like we're thinking they can dominate this game and control the boards or anything. I feel that's something I've been pre preparing and working on, and I think we can control the boards. Duke has been out-rebounded plenty this season, but the Devils are rarely outscored. What's more, they think they've turned it up in intensity this week, and they've added a new wrinkle on offense. Um, it's a new, new motion offense, uh, a lot more picking, a lot more screening, uh, giving Bobby or whoever's the point guard when they come out of court a lot more options, and uh, I think it'll definitely help us out. The new offense should make it easier for Grant to get his shots, even with his limited mobility caused by the sore but improving toe. Rick Sullivan, WRAL TV5 Sports, Chicago. Again, the schedule on TV5, Duke Southern Illinois at 8, UNC East Carolina at 10 o'clock. Play, but the constant grind and the intensity where teams strive towards that delicate chemistry of personalities and talent they need to win. Into that world stepped Christian Leitner this season. He is talented, he is not bashful, and right now, according to those around him, he is very much early on the learning curve of how to be a pro. Here's Mark Schwartz. He appears to have it all. A Duke education, the starring role on back-to-back -back NCAA champions, the only collegian to make the dream team, and the looks of a matinee idol. But life as an NBA rookie has been anything but idyllic for Christian Leitner. They expect you to be the all-American boy, like you said. Uh, you know, the kid who does everything perfect and goes to church every day and uh, you know, sets the table every day. I think there's too much pressure put on them. People expect so much. I mean, young ladies are, are crying when they see him and they're falling out, they're fainting, you know, they're following our bus. You know, I mean, he's getting a lot of attention. And not all of it flattering. His teammates have accused him of being selfish. GM Jack McCloskey called him unprofessional. And when his coaches have been critical, Leitner has fired back with venom and profanity. If uh, a coach yells at me in a situation where I think it's wrong, I'm not going to be the, you know, the 10-year-old rookie and say, okay, well, you know, go ahead and yell at me. I'm going to stand up for myself. This is the NBA. You know, you've got to put up with certain things. You've got to swallow your pride certain times. Uh, no matter how much you want to scream at the coach, no matter how much more money you make than he does. In Minneapolis, they've may maybe never seen a white kid run to his bench and, and swear. Um, they've probably seen a black kid do it, and, you know, and the thing that's wrong about that scenario is that they will say, well, that's okay, you know, a black kid do it, did it, that's normal for black people, and that, that's baloney. Um, who's to say it's not, not normal for me to be like that? Leitner claims he's actually toned down the act. I have held myself back this year. Um, compared to my last two years at Duke, um, how, mu how vocal I was and how, how much I tried to help the coaches and stuff. Um, you know, I've probably done one twentieth of that this year. Yet Chuck Person says Leitner shows little respect for fellow pros. Sometimes you don't know where Christian's coming from. He's like on, um, I don't know, Pluto somewhere 80% uh, of the time. And sometimes when he comes up down to earth, he's a fantastic player. And his heart, maybe he should go to the Wizard or something. And, get a heart or some, I don't know, courage. One thing he doesn't lack is arrogance, a trait he shares with two of his all-time favorites, the bad boy of tennis and the bad boy of pop music. I love Matt Grant. I think I'm a sucker for uh, talent. You know, I love Prince musically because he's extremely talented, but some people think he's weird and he's a jerk. But that's what, you know, the media says and stuff. Leitner's even managed to alienate the referees after this ill-advised threat to Mike Mathis this past January. That was a big mistake on his part with the officials because each official will look at that throughout the season and I think they've, they've labeled him a little bit because I know he doesn't get some of the calls that he should get. 
In a season riddled with rookie mistakes, Leitner says the worst one was when he defied his coach, listening instead to his agent and attending an awards banquet in North Carolina, skipping a mandatory practice. The Timberwolves suspended him for a game and fined him a day's pay. We can't have that. Uh, he went against the team, and, and I was just dis more disappointed because I felt he let me down and he let his teammates down by putting an award in front of uh, working out and getting prepared for, for what he gets paid to do, and that's play basketball. He's spoiled, isn't he? Rotten. Spoiled rotten. And if he tells you that he's not, then he's not telling the truth. But uh, he is, and... and I think I would have been also had I been given the things that he's been given, had I accomplished the things that he, that he accomplished. The days of preferential treatment are clearly over, at least until Leitner proves to be as special in this league as he was in college. I'm Mark Schwartz for ESPN. Thanks, Mark. Here's the top of last year's draft. Shaq's uh, magic team right now in a anything but magical slump. Morning's arrival, the catalyst for Charlotte's elevation to playoff contender. And Leitner's numbers are up there, shooting 47%, but the number you prove yourself by in the NBA, victories. Three games. You'll see more March Madness on CBS Sports. Today in Chicago, there was another Jordan dominating the headlines. Adonis Jordan of Kansas. The six-foot senior led the Jayhawks past Ball State as play got underway in the Midwest region. Kansas, a second seed, is off on the right track on the yellow brick road to the Final Four. The madness continued down in Orlando where Matt Green's three-point play put 11th seed Tulane on top of the Southeast sixth seed Kansas State with 52 seconds to play and the green wave held on. Hi everyone, welcome to our CBS Sports continuing coverage of the 1993 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. I'm Jim Nance along with Bill Raftery. What a night we have in store Ooh, for you. Some great stars, not us of course, but <laughs> you think of, think of Hardaway and Robinson and Montrose, some great players including Bobby Hurley, Caroline and Duke as well. Looking forward to it. A primetime doubleheader will start you off in the Rosemont Horizon as Duke University begins its national title defense against Southern Illinois. Ashraf Amaya, the 6'8 senior center, leads the Saluki. He averaged over 19 points and 10 rebounds per game and was the MVP in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. For Duke, Bobby Hurley makes everything happen. He is the all-time assist leader in college basketball and in the NCAA tournament as well. And you look at his history, even back in high school, when it gets time to a tournament, he will not go quietly. A winner. You'd want him to take that last putt. You know, he keys the defense. Coach Richie Hurrian of Southern Illinois may wish he had. Walt Clyde Frazier to penetrate this defense. But when you think of this club, Mike Krzyzewski, 33-7, two NCAA championships, an incredible performance. He's five miles away from Rosemont. The northwest section is home where he's more popular than the late Mayor Richard Daly Sr. Ooh, but doesn't have quite the clout of the ex-mayor. <laughs> Got some home cooking this week. I was looking forward to going home. We'll check them out in just a few minutes. Let's get you up to date on a couple of games already in progress, starting in Orlando with Memphis State and Western Kentucky. 7-17 left in the first half. Memphis State leads by two. Hardaway, one of six from the floor. In East Region play in Winston-Salem, Purdue and Rhode Island are underway. Robinson has nine for the Boilermakers. That game is tied with 6-20 left in the half. And just starting in Salt Lake City, Santa Clara against uh, Arizona. In fact, they're about to have the center jump. Looking ahead to our doubleheader games, East Carolina will challenge North Carolina. Louisiana State will square off against California. Tennessee State will test Seton Hall, and Missouri will take on Temple. As usual, wherever the action heats up anywhere in the country, we'll do our best to get you there. Right now, let's give you the score from a game completed just about an hour ago out west. Vanderbilt, the three seed in the west, advanced with a 20-point blowout of Boise State. And uh, Bobby Dye, the coach of the Broncos, his team couldn't contain Billy McCaffrey. What a story he's been all season, Bill. Great performer, whether it's penetrating or shooting deep, he's really led any Fogler's club. The threes, Darnell Woods, three of 17, and disappointment from deep 
for Boise. While Vanderbilt was nailing 10 out of 18 from three-point range, and now Vandy's into the second round. Next up for the Commodores will be Illinois in the second round. Tomorrow night, Indiana, the top seed in the Midwest, will open against Wright State. Allen Henderson, the Hoosier 6'9 sophomore forward, is listed as doubtful for that game and questionable for the rest of the tournament. His only recent action consisted of the last six seconds of the final home game. On Tuesday, he scrimmaged and ran the stairs, and a short time ago, his coach, Bobby Knight, had this to say. Yeah, there's always a chance. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't, uh, I, I don't know on percentages what it would be, but I mean, there's, uh, you know, we've got, there's a chance that he could play. All right, so he doesn't know for sure, but Raf, tell me, can they go to the Final Four without him? I don't think they can win without him. His defense inside, his rebounding, his shot blocking, and his ability to make the jumper. Bobby enjoys these controversies. <laughs> and a lot of people have Duke in the office pool out of that mm -hmm. bracket. I I'm still sticking so. by Indiana, with or without. Coming up, Southern Illinois against Duke, and we'll send you out to courtside to join Vern Lundquist and Clark Kellogg at the Rosemont Horizon when the road to the Final Four continues on CBS right after this. Enjoy the games. We'll be here all night with you, folks. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Cadillac, changing the way you think about American automobiles. Diet Mountain Dew. You've never done nothing till you do Diet Dew. Yeah! And by the principal financial group, the financial company that gives you an edge. From a sold-out Rosemont Horizon on the northern edge of Chicago, Illinois. Another first-round encounter in the Midwest region tonight. The Southern Illinois Salukis take on the Duke Blue Devils. The winner of this game will take on either California or LSU. They meet in the final game of four later tonight. Earlier this afternoon, Kansas and Brigham Young advanced with wins respectively over Ball State and Southern Methodist University. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Clark Kellogg. The Duke Blue Devils begin their quest for a third consecutive title tonight. But they do so, Clark, on a bit of a down note. They've lost their last two. Well, Grant Hill is a key factor in them losing their last two. He's not. He's played his first game in about a month just last week against Georgia Tech. Moved well, looked good, but it's clear that he's not 100% yet. How healthy he is remains to be seen, but he's going to give it a shot, and their fortunes ride with how healthy Grant Hill is. Duke, of course, as experienced as any team in the country in the NCAA. That is not the case for their opponents. Southern Illinois enters the NCAA tournament tonight for the first time since 1977. But they come in feeling they can be competitive. They're a fairly confident bunch, and I don't think they're going to be in awe of Duke at all. They've got an outstanding center in Ashraf Amaya, a three-time all-conference pick. He scores the ball well inside at about 17 points a game, and he is a big-time glass eater, averaging 11 rebounds per outing. We have been joined by Leslie Visser tonight. Let's go to Leslie. When they say success is relative, they might be talking about the Hurley brothers. Bobby is, of course, here with Duke, while Danny is down in Orlando with Seton Hall. Bobby told me before the game he called Danny to wish him luck tonight against Tennessee State. He said they made plans to meet in a couple weeks in New Orleans. That, of course, would be in the finals. Burn. All right, Leslie, let's check the lineups. First of all, on the left side for the Salukis of Southern That's Illinois, that. Marcus Kimmons is joined by Mirko Pavlovich. Ashraf Amaya and Lowry and Bell. And for Duke, Grant Hill, Antonio Lang, Jericho Parks, Thomas Hill, and Bobby Hurley. Mike Krzyzewski playing just nine miles from the place of his birth, the northwestern side of Chicago. His mom is here and other members of the family. There is Mike in the middle of the Duke bunch and Rich Heron, 29 years, a high school coach in his seventh season as the head coach at Southern Illinois. The three-man officiating crew, Frank Bassone, John Bonder, and Mike Sanzi. This, by the way, is not the first meeting between Duke and Southern Illinois. You might think that they are incongruous rivals, but they met twice in the NIT tournament in the 60s. And they split the two games in respective years. Amaya and Parks will jump it at center. 
And it comes down in the hands of Duke, and Bobby Hurley has it. Well, this is the beginning of Duke's run for a third consecutive championship, and I would expect them to come out very aggressive early. That ball will go to Southern Illinois. The Blue Devils are 23 and 7, but 10 and 6 in the ACC, and they lost their last two at North Carolina and at Georgia Tech. Look for them to be very aggressive at the defensive end. Bobby Hurley really got on his teammates after that loss against Georgia Tech and questioned their intensity. Amaya is fouled by Grant Hill. And Ostroff Amaya, a senior from Oak Park, Illinois, a suburb of the Chicago area where he played for Walter Lutheran High, will go to the line. Both of these teams want to score in transition. I think the key for Southern Illinois is, one, they need a strong early start. Secondly, they've got to handle the variety of defensive pressure that Duke will throw at them. And then they've got to do a good job inside, especially with Cherokee Parks, who's been playing extremely well lately. Amaya is a 69% free throw shooter over the course of the season, and he has been at the line a lot. That's the 201st free throw attempt he's made this year. And he's two for two. The Salukis take an early lead. And one other key I might add for the Salukis is containing number 11, Bobby Hurley. You can't allow him to penetrate into the heart of your defense. They start with Chris Lowry guarding Hurley at the top of the zone. There's the jumper too strong. Parks gets the rebound, puts it up, and is fouled by Pavlovich. Mirko Pavlovich from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. This is his tenth. It's Lowry instead. They don't get Pavlovich. It's number ten, Chris Lowry. And Parks will go to the line. Parks has been on a tear of late. Double digits in eight of his last nine. Really aggressive and assertive inside when he catches it. Also doing a nice job rebounding the basketball. 6'11 sophomore, Huntington Park, Huntington Beach, rather, California. One of two. Marcus Timmons comes down with a rebound, number 40 for SIU. Opening minute of the game, SIU on top 2 1. Here is Lowry, the point guard guarded by Hurley. They go right side and peer inside toward Amaya. Timmons strong to the basket. No good. Rebound comes down to Grant Hill. Hill with a sprained toe in his left foot will not be at 100% for the rest of the year. But I was talking to, this, to the assistant coach, Mike Gray, and he felt like Grant Hill had finally come to the point in his mind where he was just going to let it flow and try to forget about the toe. Good double pump in the air by Cherokee Parks, and it's 3-2. Duke leads. Antonio Lang applies the pressure now on Marcus Timmons. Here's Pavlovich. Grant Hill doing the defensive job on him. Against a team like Duke that plays so well defensively, you have to make basketball plays strong with the ball and make your opportunity shots. And hit shots just like that, and Lowry does. 4-3 Southern Illinois. The Salukis come in as a 14th seed, 23 and 9 for the year. Grand Hill baseline jumper. And Duke back on top. I really think it's important for Duke to play with somewhat of an attitude defensively. Play with a little chip on their shoulder. Play with emotion. Play like the defending champs. They've gotten away from that in their last two games. And then Grant Hill has to really look to be assertive early. I think so often he lets the game come to him when he actually should be dictating things, especially at the offensive end. Amaya is fouled. I found it interesting some of the comments made by by uh, some of the Duke players. Take a look at Amaya first. Well, here you take a look at him trying to hold off Parks and doing a nice job getting himself to the free throw line for the second time already. Tonight. This goes to your point about the assertiveness. Bobby Hurley said one of the things they missed with the absence of Christian, Christian Leitner and Brian Davis this year was somebody to stir things mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And you certainly need that element especially when you're talking about repeating as, as national champions because everybody comes at you with their best effort, with their full tank of emotion and adrenaline. So you have to have some people within your group 
that can get the other guys going and that play with tremendous intensity and fire every night out. Amaya misfires on the free throws. Parks double teamed. Help defensively by Amaya. Here's Hurley. Pulls up, takes the jumper. Got it. 7-4, Duke on top. Tyrone Bell. Antonio Lang is screened, and they switch. Grant Hill has Bell now. And that ball is off of Maya's hands. Little sign of nervousness here. Well, that was a forced pass, and again, Duke put such good pressure on the ball. You've got to be sure you're ready to pass. That time, Bell got himself up in the air and made a tough pass to Amaya. You really have to keep your feet against a good defensive team. Hill. The dish goes to Antonio Lang. And Duke is out to a 9-4 lead. Timmons. Pavlovich. Amaya. Nope, too strong. Here comes Duke in transition. They don't have the numbers. It's two on four, so they'll set it up. Hill for three. Got it. A 12-4 lead for the Duke Blue Devils. That's only Grant Hill's second three-point made field goal this season. Salukis are getting rattled, and Rich Heron, the head coach, is aware of that. Substitution now. Matt Marty Clark will enter the game for Duke. Three Southern Marty Illinois Marty University Clark. turnovers. Grant Hill will get a rest, and Clark comes in. And Duke has picked up five points off those turnovers. Well, we talked about how important it was for the Salukis to handle the basketball early. So far, Duke has made them turn it over and then made them pay for the mistakes. Early finds Parks underneath. You can see Grant Hill needed a blow. Again, he's missed over a month of action and just now trying to get his legs back under him. Antonio Lang. I mean, typically he would have no problem getting to the first TV timeout. Five seconds on the shot clock. Parks takes the jumper and Maya is guilty of the foul. That is not using your head. You're within five seconds of the shot clock expiring. You played good defense, and then you bail out. A 6'11 guy shooting a jump shot. Chris Collins coming back home. His dad, Doug, of course, All-American at Illinois State, and the former coach of the Bulls. He is here in attendance tonight, in part because his high school coach was Rich Heron. So all kinds of ties going on here. There's Doug Collins. There's Doug Collins had a great career as a player in the NBA. Now doing some work as an analyst. But he's a dad tonight. Yes indeed. Cherokee Parks will try and give Duke a 10 point edge. Does. 15 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Duke in command by double digits. 15-19 remaining first half of play. The Blue Devils on an 11 to nothing run in the last two minutes and 40 seconds and substitutions for Rich Heron's Southern Illinois bunch. Now Lowry still on the floor with Amaya, but Chris Carr and Paul Lusk have come in and they are joined by this man Tyrone Bell. And there's another misfire, but Lowry chases it down for the Salukis. Lowry. Nope. In and out. And Grant Hill gets the breather. He's back in the lineup now. Chris Collins has the ball. Collins has been on fire of late with shots like that. Well, he's an excellent three-point shooter. Make it 10 of his last 23 that he's knocked in from behind the arc. You just can't give him time to set his feet back there. Lusk got it. 17 to 6. The Duke Blue Devils lead. Eric Meek has come into the lineup for Duke as well. It's Hill and Meek along with Collins, Hurley, and Marty Clark. 
They're going to get Meek shoving off underneath the basket. His first foul. Duke Blue Devils lead it by 11. They went on an 11 to nothing run moments ago in a few minute and 40 second span to go from one down to 10 up. And we have 14 minutes and eight seconds remaining in the first half. First round action between the third seeded Duke Blue Devils and the number 14 seeded Southern Illinois Saluki. Bell gets two. 17-8. Duke, six in a row. Clark guarded by Lusk. Makes it seven, and it's from three point. 20 to eight. This is where it's happening, though, for Duke defensively. Constant, aggressive pressure on the ball. Nothing easy. Southern Illinois needs to look to dribble penetrate. See, they're trying to pass through this pressure. What you need to do is break down that pressure with some penetration off the dribble. Then you can make easier passes. Saluki's first goal for 50, Ashraf Amaya, his second. Foul is on Ashraf Amaya, his second foul. And the third team foul. Thomas Hill comes back in, so does Antonio Lang. So on the floor now for Duke, it's Hurley, Lang, Hill, Hill, and Parks. Eight in a row for the Blue Devils. An offensive clinic. They're getting high quality shots, squaring up and just burying everything they're looking at. And the lead is 14. Foul on Thomas Hill. His second. And the team fourth. I really think the players know that people are somewhat counting them out in terms of three-peating. They've hit a little air pocket here late in the season. Obviously, Grant Hill being out for six games with the sprained toe is a factor in that. But I think they really are going to surprise some people with how well they play, especially if Grant Hill continues to improve in terms of that sprained toe. That's another turnover. Five turnovers now for Southern Illinois. Two more for Grant Hill. That's nine baskets in a row. Nine in succession, and the lead is 16. And Southern Illinois is in danger of falling hopelessly behind. Amaya Carr gets the rebound, and Hurley has it now for Duke. Grant Hill. Bell knocks it out of bounds. Duke will inbound. Rich Heron searching for answers goes to his bench again. Pavlovich, Timmons, and JoJo Johnson enter the ball game. Hurley <laughs> for three, and that's 10 baskets in a row. My goodness. And the lead is 19. See, by making all these field goals, obviously there aren't any rebounds, so you don't have any chances for transition hoops. And then in the half court, Duke taking Southern Illinois out of everything they want to do offensively. I expected the focus defensively. I mean, that's where you can really get aggressive and you don't have to really idle down or pace yourself at the defensive end. Uh -huh. Offensively, I'm somewhat surprised. I don't know if I've seen a team all year long make 10 shots in a row from the floor. Now they'll slow it down with 18 in the shot clock. Back to Thomas Hill. That's finally off the mark, and the streak ends at 10. And I mean, heck, I've done a bunch of college games, nowhere near the number our comrade Bill Rafter is starting. <laughs> but nonetheless, I still can't recall seeing 10 field goals made in a row. 27 to 8. Blue Devils on top. Amaya steals the Hurley pass. Here's JoJo Johnson. He averaged 29.8 points per game in high school this year. The shot no good. Thomas Hill rebound for Duke. Everything is challenged. Nothing easy for Southern Illinois, and then no second shot opportunities. Southern Illinois, 10 of 13. Actually, Duke 
I mean, Duke. Uh, Duke 10 of 13 in Southern Illinois, 3 of 10. Marks starts a new streak. Yeah. 29-8. There's the switch. Pavlovich. Short. Amaya. And Ashraf Amaya will go to the line. Boy, Duke quite impressive here. And as a defending champion, I think you've got to send a message, especially when everybody is whispering about your possible demise. And in these first 10 minutes, they've, they've sent the message. Time has been called. I'm going to get you. A night known for drama. Officer down. We've got a hostage situation here. April 1st, picket fences moves to Thursday. Every seat filled tonight is sellout of 17,400 plus, and they have seen an awesome display by the Duke Blue Devils, both ends of the court, 29 to 8, and we've just reached the 10 minute mark of the first half. Shot no good. Pavlovich tries to chase down the rebound. Amaya gets it. Back it goes to Bell for three. Nailed it. Tyrone Bell with the basket. At the other end, Blakeney, Kenny Blakeney has come in as Mike Krzyzewski is going to use a lot of people while he has the opportunity. There's Marty Clark for three. Yep. Target practice, warm-up jump shots. Southern Illinois really not doing a good job getting out and challenging, and then Duke has been so impressive at both ends. I mean, they've taken all the starts out of the Salukis. Including from three point range, five of six for Duke. His first, the team's six. Johnson finds Amaya. And he is nearly taken down. Ashraf Amaya. Good hard foul coming up by Clark. Good catch, good ball fake by Amaya. And then Clark making sure he doesn't get it up on the glass. Sends Amaya to the line. And he's been there quite often here in the first half. He's already attempted, I think, six free throws. Actually, these will be his fifth and sixth free throw attempt. That makes him three of five. That black patch, by the way, that each of the players from Southern Illinois is wearing is a patch worn as a memorial to five international students who were burned to death in a fire on campus back in November. Uh, thus the symbolism of the black patch. 32-13 is the score. 9-08. And here's a steal by Johnson to Amaya. Offensive foul. That's three fouls on Amaya. You make the call, still by JoJo Johnson. Nice lead for Amaya. Step, rise, attempted flush, and Blakeney apparently was there, although I think he slid under him a bit. Any third foul in the first half is tough. On a questionable call, even tougher, but Rich Heron has no choice but to leave his outstanding senior on the floor. Marks too strong. Timmons chases down the loose ball. Johnson goes by Collins. Their fathers were teammates in high school. Chris Collins, JoJo Johnson. You know about Doug, of course. You may have forgotten about Danny Johnson, JoJo's dad. There is Doug. He played his high school ball at Benton, Illinois where one of his teammates was Danny Johnson, mm -hmm. who later went on to play for Western Kentucky, a team that finished third in the NCAA. And they were both coached by the man who is now coaching JoJo Johnson. Richmond. The branch doesn't fall too far from the tree, does it? No. Southern Illinois would like to get into a running game, but it's hard to run off made field goal and there have been a bushel basket full of those free throws won't go 
Duke has it. 32 13, eight and a half to go first half. And you wonder how much Duke's domination here early has really taken the Salukis aback and, surpri and surprised them. I mean, you come in thinking that if we can get off to, oh, my, if my we can get off to, to a good, strong start and keep it tight early, maybe we've got a shot. But Duke put all of that to rest quickly. And now you have to fight and scratch and claw just to gain some respect. Little things keep going wrong for the Salukis. 32-13, 7.52 to go. Meek from Grant Hill, whose mom and dad are here as well. Grant Hill has the whole package. He's what I like to call a stat sheet stuffer, and then he fills up the box sheet. He's going to score, he's going to assist, he's going to steal the ball, he's going to block shots, he's going to do everything you can do statistically when he's on the floor. And he had the assist in the last basket. That one by Amaya gives him six points and makes it 34 15. Hurley dishes back to Clark. Why did it seem he took a few steps? Because he took one big one. But take a look at Grant Hill finding Eric Meek open inside, a quick flick of the wrist for the nice dime. Calvin and Janet Hill enjoyed that. They're sitting in the middle of the Duke section. Championship on CBS. Back to action and an offensive foul called on Grant Hill. And there is Calvin, his dad, who uh, is going to be blowing bubbles if things don't start working a little better for his son. <laughs> Notice how Calvin and Janet, when your only son is a star at Duke, you don't sit together. <laughs> it's a little superstition. So Janet moves down about. Now they started out as a prior, husband and wife. Yeah. Right, prior to the game. Right. But when the game started, Janet said, I'm out of here. And the ball goes up, they go separate ways. Still in the same row, though. Right, exactly. And have been for a long, long time. 34-17. Another steal by the Salukis. This one taken by Chris Carr. Here's Paul Lusk. Travel. Seven turnovers now on Southern Illinois University. And I can hear the question being asked around the country as Cherokee Parks comes back in. Herman, what is a Saluki? <laughs> so, Clark, what is a Saluki? Uh, there he is, right there. I knew you knew. <laughs> a Saluki is an Egyptian dog. Don't ask. Except I wasn't that going to. They used to be called the Maroons. I mean, that's a tough choice. Yeah, that really is. Maroon to a Saluki. Early. I've gone to the C material awfully early. 6-10 <laughs> remaining. It's 37-17. And you're going to be there for a while. My bucket's going to be empty before we get to the half. Offensive foul on Chris Lowry. That's his second. 15 foul. Bobby Hurley has great feet, rarely gets beat off the dribble, anticipates extremely well, but sometimes you can anticipate all you want. If your feet don't get where you're anticipating, it does no good, but he's got some of the quickest feet in the country, and that's what pro scouts really like about him. He never really gets beat off the dribble, and he typically always takes and makes big three-point shots. How about the ball movement? And it winds up in the hands of Thomas Hill, who cans a three-pointer. He's got five points. As you can see, Duke has been torrid from long range. Pavlovich, it's taken away by Marty Clark. The lead is 40 to 17. And Hurley got a little quick that time. Clark goes for the steal. When you're going to shoot the ball well, it helps to have good ball movement. Down into the post, out top the hill from Parks, then the extra pass. 
and Thomas Hill buries the triple. That is a fine example of making the extra pass and having proper spacing at the offensive end. Antonio Lang is back in now for Marty Clark. So it's Thomas Hill, Bobby Hurley, Lang, Grant Hill, and Cherokee Parks. And here's another steal. Ten turnovers for SIU. Grant Hill. Thomas Hill is down at the far end. There he is. Grimacing in pain, holding the right knee. Thomas Hill, the senior from Lancaster, Texas, just south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. One of the most underrated players in the country, a third team all ACC selection for the third year in a row. A guy who's been remarkably consistent throughout his career. Let's take a look at the right side of your screen, the right side of the key. There's Thomas Hill, number 21. Actually just actually just came down in an awkward manner. Well, actually, I was locked into, I reversed my numbers. I was Antonio looking at Lang. Antonio yeah, Lang was, instead of Thomas Hill. At any rate, he is up and walking off without assistance. And uh, we'll get a further report, but it doesn't look all that bad right now. Chris Collins comes on. Antonio Lang, Grant Hill. Parks, look at the points off turnovers, 19 to 4. Well, you can take a dartboard and line it up with all kinds of different areas of the game of basketball, shooting, rebounding, defense, points off turnovers, and you could just throw darts at it, and you'd hit the target for what Duke has done in this half. And we've still got 4.30 remaining. Marcelo De Silva, a seven-footer, has come on now for the Salukis. He's in at center number 12. Collins, Cherokee Parks. The foul is on the seven-footer, De Silva. And Cherokee Parks will go to the line. I've seen Duke a few times recently. I had their game against Georgia Tech in the ACC, tur ACC tournament last week. And then I had them about three weeks, two weeks before that against Florida State, which was their last impressive win. And they're playing much like they did against Florida State. What has been missing, uh, other than the obvious Grand Hill? Well, I think part of it is the fact that the expectations of many are so high because of the standard they've set over the last seven years. I mean, they've been to the final four, six of those seven years. They've won back-to-back -back championships. So anytime they hit, a, hit an air pocket, a lot of people tend to panic and say, well, they're weak, they're vulnerable, they can be taken. But the one thing you can't forget or discount is the fact that they know what it takes to get there in terms of defense, intensity, unity, emotion. And it seems like maybe by losing that first round game in the ACC tournament, Grand Hill gets a couple of days rest. This team gets a chance to really focus in on getting and succeeding, getting into the tournament and succeeding, and maybe that could be a blessing in disguise. Seems to be thus far. Duke jumped out to a 29 to 8 lead to start the game. They're still hitting 70% from the field, 7 of 8 from three point range, 19 points off turnovers for Duke. If you're a Saluki fan, it doesn't look real positive right now. <laughs> no, it's um, slowly fading. It's just a matter of by how many. 44-21 right now, a 23-point edge. And another turnover. That's the 11th of the first half. And and the Saluki, go ahead, Clark. Excuse, excuse me, Vern, but the Salukis come in having won their last five. Missouri Valley Conference champions had a great season and just never really got started. And part of that is due to the attitude Duke brought to the floor, which is one of a champion. We're going to let these guys know that there's no way they're going to be able to hang around with us tonight. And from the first two minutes, that's pretty much been the case. On the floor right now, Tyrone Bell, JoJo Johnson. That's thrown away underneath, and SIU will contain it. De Silva, Timmons, and Pavlovich. Amaya on the bench with three fouls. And a 
and a foul on Jojo Johnson. There is Ashraf Samaya. Such high hopes for tonight, and then three quick fouls. And mm -hmm. Also, some signs of nervousness, I thought, from him as well as from his teammates early on. Well, as much as they talked about how they were ready and prepared and not going to be jittery, it's one thing to talk about. It's a whole other thing to get out here against the two-time defending champions that are locking you up defensively and still play with 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 a relaxed posture. I would think, Clark, that it's almost impossible if you're from Southern Illinois, you come onto the Rosemont Horizon floor for warm-ups, that you don't sneak a peek at the guys in the other uniforms <laughs> and say, my gosh. Here we are. Duke. And they're down there. Yeah. 46-21, <laughs> 325 to go, first half. Johnson. Finds Bell and then Hurley comes over quickly on defense. They back it up and go for three. It's short off the Silva on the line. Duke ball. At that point you made about nervousness and them being tight, the Salukis I'm speaking of is certainly uh, accurate because most of their shots they pulled the trigger on. They kind of alligator armed their shots, haven't followed through. Amaya comes back in for the final three minutes of the first half. Here's Hurley, got it. That's another three-pointer, and he's got 13 points. And it's 49-21. Rejected by Parks, saved by Hurley, then back to Parks. And look at Bobby Hurley. They've got a 28-point lead. And he's got four birds. All he wants to do is win and compete. No matter what the score is, he's always out there competing. Chris Collins with a three-pointer. Rebound, Grant Hill. Watch Duke run. Offensive foul. Starts with the block of Cherokee Parks. He and Mike Jaminski, the only guys to get 60 blocks in the season. And here Parks sends one out of there. Amaya. And this is what makes Duke so good. Attitude. They're up plus 30, and he's on the floor getting after a loose ball. And that is attitude. That's pride. That's attitude. And that's setting a standard of excellence. And that's what this Duke team has been about for a long time. 52 21 two minutes to go before halftime car alters the shot because of parks jojo johnson and then marcus timmons has it blocked again by antonio lane finally gets it to fall marcus timmons who is a freshman from oran missouri his team won four state titles in a row in a small high school division in missouri and he started on every single one of them Marcus Timmons, number 40, we're talking about. There he is. 130 and three as a high school player. 130 wins, three defeats. Like that's comparable to the Duke of the 80s, late 80s and 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've lost a few more games, but when you talk about championships, Back to back and six final fours. How about Bobby Hurley has led his team. I mean what he's done since the ninth grade in New Jersey is extraordinary. Well the one word that people always attach to his name is winner. And, and not only in terms of record but in terms of attitude and demeanor and leadership and all those little intangibles that go into winning and succeeding. And he just gets it done. People wonder about what kind of pro might he be. Well, I think he's got a great future. Obviously, where he ends up and what kind of team he lands on is going to determine how successful he is. But I think he's got all the makings. He's got the quick feet, the good feet. His shooting is a little suspect, mm -hmm. but he's going to get stronger. People talk about his slight frame, but he's going to get stronger. And he knows how to play. And you can never underestimate that. Last shot was on the line. One of the feet was, so it's a two-point basket. 30, 53, 25. We have 65 seconds to go before the halftime break. And this has been 
an awesome display by the Blue Devils of Duke. There's a nice play by Bell, Amaya, and it's thrown away. 13 turnovers for Southern Illinois. At the half, the Prudential Securities at the half. Jim Nance and Billy Raftery taking a rare break <laughs> from an airplane. <laughs> He's actually going to go home and see Joni tonight instead of go to an airport and get on a plane. <laughs> and Raff and Jim Nance will be along at halftime. 53 25. About a four second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Maybe five. Not that it makes a little difference. <laughs> not in the least. Somehow that's not going to be the most memorable part of this encounter. There's Hurley. That's for three. And at the other end, it's Johnson beating back the car. Well, a little trash talk, but they're down by 26. Yeah, I would think you probably ought to keep silent. That's the end of the first half of the score, 53-27 Duke. Jim Nance and Bill Raffrey, along with Prudential Securities at the half. After this word and a message from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. United, come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Pizza Hut, who reminds you that anytime's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. Unlike other teams competing in this championship, we don't mind sharing our game plans with you. We're planning on going all the way. It's your money. Pizza Hut. Oh, great! Your other pizza. Oh, another one! <laughs> Salad? Yeah. And you wow. also get... Let me guess. Dessert. Dessert. <laughs> oh, wow. but, but that... Get two medium pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies. Dinner for four, just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. College can be a bridge to the future. It's a place where you're free to express yourself. A time to find out what you're really capable of. But when testing your limits involves alcohol, when breaking away includes drinking and driving, when expressing yourself includes losing control, the lessons you learn in college may not help you get anywhere at all. This is CBS. From the mountains to the coast, on the highways and byways, 170 Chevy dealers have joined together for the biggest truck blowout in the history of the Carolinas. Buy an S10 pickup and get $750 cash back. Or take $500 cash back and your choice of a Delco Odyssey sound system, multiple CD changer, or a cellular telephone at no extra charge. Save $1,400 on a Silverado pickup with air, cassette, tilt, cruise, and more. If you've been thinking about buying a new truck, don't miss this event. See your local Carolina Chevy Geo dealer now. You know, at 20, I thought I'd be rich by now. I just never knew it could get so complicated. It's like all of a sudden you're on your own. CCB can help you figure out all of your financial options, from credit cards to mortgages. For the things you want and the things you need, we're here. I feel like I could use some answers. Central Carolina Bank will help you find a way. Halftime at the Rosemont Horizon, the Duke Blue Devils up 53 to 27. They have made statements every way they could, <laughs> including Clark uh, from three-point range, where they were 9 of 11. Well, you take a look at the shot breakdown for Duke this first half, and tremendous. Look at what they did outside of the arc. 9 of 11 from behind the arc, 18 of 26 overall. 
It's hard to shoot it much better than that if you come in the gym by yourself. Are you at all surprised at how well they played? Not really, because they had a couple of days to really get focused and to get geared up for this first round game. And I think their whole agenda was to send a message to those that they may encounter on this journey towards New Orleans. SIU is getting it right in the nose. It's 53 27 at the half. The Duke Blue Devils lead it. Jim Nance and Bill Raftery be along with at the half after this. The solid granite gray of Wall Street. The boundless blue of a Paris morning. The radiant reds of an Australian sunrise. In celebration of a new style of service at home and abroad, we now embrace the colors of the world as the new colors of United Airlines. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. How about some trivia? Who holds the record for being voted the most outstanding player of this tournament? Okay, here's an even tougher one. Has any car ever made the Consumer's Digest Best Buy list more than once? The Oldsmobile 88 has. In fact, it's made that list three years in a row. And now you can get this 88 Special Edition for just $18,995. It's your money. From Red Grange to the modern grace of Olympian Tracy Corkins, the flavor and pageantry of all 21 men's and women's collegiate sports come alive at the NCAA Visitor Center. Come celebrate the magic moments in college sports at the NCAA Visitor Center, open year-round in Kansas City. Charlotte, North Carolina will host the 1994 NCAA Final Four. For instructions to receive an official ticket application, call 1-900-646-1994 or write to the NCAA. Ticket recipients will be selected from a random drawing of applications. Call 1-900-646-1994. $1 for the first minute, 50 cents each additional minute. Applications must be received by April 30th, 1993. This message provided by the NCAA. A party of uncommon elegance requires a chef with the ultimate good taste. How to chop you up and throw you in the bouillabaisse. base. An all-new Northern Exposure Monday. CBS Sports presents Prudential Securities at the Half. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Prudential Securities at the Half. Jim Nance, along with Bill Raftery and Duke leading 53-27, uh, demolishing Southern Illinois as Hurley has uh, 14. But everywhere else, Raft, the action is simmering. It's wild. Santa Clara, Arizona. Uh, Santa Clara coming up, banging the threes. Arizona making a nice run. It's exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. And by John Hancock Financial Services. Halftime at the Rosemont Horizon. The Duke Blue Devils lead it 53 27. We go to Leslie Bissard. Furness, Walt Frazier would say Duke is rebounding and astounding. Well, Clark Kellogg was absolutely right. The Duke coaches said they wanted to make a statement early in this game. As for the Salukis, SIU assistant Ron Smith said they have not played a team of this caliber and that they went in the locker room and tried to come up with a 25 point play. Vern? <laughs> <laughs> if they they do they've got a scoop <laughs> big time 53 27 and the Blue Devils have just had everything go their way thus far well they shot extremely well they defended and they did just what they wanted to do in sending that message that they're here and they're for real but the Salukis this half really just want to try to salvage a good positive half there you see field goal percentage and one of the things you look at is the difference between what you shoot and what you allow the opposition to do shoot 28 points difference there turnover Southern Illinois with 13 points off plus 17 for Duke so as you would expect in a game where Duke leads by 26 everything statistically pointing their way the winner of this one gets either California or LSU they play in the final game of four here at the Rosemont Horizon 
And barring a seismic event, it's going to be the big Blue Devils. Here's Bell. Gets the first basket. 53-29. It's Hurley Grant Hill. By the way, the word on the bench on Thomas Hill was a bruise, and he's back in the lineup, so everything is just fine. Here's Grant Hill, 4-2. But if you're Duke, it's about executing, continuing to play at a high level. If you're the Salukis, obviously you want to show a little better than you did in the first half. You want to shoot it better. You don't want to turn it over. And you want to try to play close in this second half. Nico Pavlovich gets two. Rich Heron is up, applauding the effort of his ball club. 55-31. You know, as much as the coaches want to prepare their team for a, for a Duke, it's impossible to impress upon your kids how good they are when you just watch video and you talk about it and you watch them on the tube. I mean, when you get out there and go face to face when there's no room to get shots and everything's challenged, um, it can be quite shocking. And I think that's part of what happened in the first half to the Saluki. And they just never did recover. Back it goes. Timmons tries to penetrate. Cherokee Park says no. There's a nice pass underneath. Lowry. Dish right. Good inside passing, but Timmons misses the uh, the short shot. A good sentence, but they forgot to put the period on it. I like the way you compose your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that a little bit. Well, I, didn't didn't mean, I didn't mean to throw you off guard there, partner. 1803. Remaining in the ballgame. Hey, you see Chris Lowry. He was a high school teammate of Calvert Cheney's in Evansville. And what a year Calvert Cheney has so, had. Indiana yet to play, of course. They are the top seed in the Midwest. They play tomorrow without, it would seem, Allen Henderson. From the corner, Hurley, three-point play. And the Blue Devils are now 10 of 12 from three-point range. At that pace, it would be a new NCAA tournament record. The old record held by Kansas, 80% on 8 of 10 shooting during a game against Purdue in 1988. And Thomas Hill will shoot a couple. As Tyrone Bell, the senior from Evanston, Illinois, is guilty of the foul. Rich Ham, Heron, 29 years a high school coach in the state of Illinois. Most of those at Benton, the town of 7,000 downstate Illinois. Said he he wanted to go into college coaching, but the opportunities never came along, or he mm -hmm. never got the job. Matter of fact, applied for and was turned down for the SIU job once before he got it. But it was a perfect fit when he did get it, and he's done a wonderful job in his seven years there. He certainly has. Persistence pays, whether you're a player or a coach. Now 59 years of age, Thomas Hill at the line will shoot another. This would give. Duke, 60 points for the night. Got it. Sixty-thirty-one. Bell guarded by Hill. Now Hurley and Lowry, they switch. Lowry fouled. Near the conclusion of tonight's game, Clark and I will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each school. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Cherokee Parks guilty of the foul, his first and the first team foul in the second half. And Lowry goes to the line where he is a 72% free throw shooter for the season.
gets them both 17 10 remaining 60 33. Hurley brings it across the timeline. Three thump, that's for two. On the line, ball stolen by Lowry. Four on one break. And the basket goes to Marcus Timmons. One of the few transition opportunities. And it's so hard when you're up as big as Duke is up to, to keep your interest. I mean, human nature is that we relax when things are in a comfort zone. And you might see a little of that happen here with Duke. They trap down on Cherokee Parks has the ball turned over. 11 Duke turnovers now. Bell blocked by Grant Hill. Pavlovich runs it down. Mirko Pavlovich from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. Duke challenging every single shot attempt by the Salukis, and that too surprising to Southern Illinois to have somebody flying at your shot, whether it's a perimeter shot or something inside. Ashraf Amaya gets the basket. He's got eight. And it's 60 to 37. Well, if you're Southern Illinois, you've worked hard all season long mm -hmm. to get into this tournament. And self-respect is so significant for these young men. Exactly. They realize this game is being seen in just about every part of the country. And they know they're a better team than they showed in the first half. That ball out of bounds, and no, oh, a foul is called on Grant Hill. That's his third. And the second team foul. So do not expect them to roll over. They will not do it. Time has been called at 60 to 37. Game of four at the Rosemont Horizon coming up next. California with Jason Kidd and the new permanent head coach, Todd Bozeman, at 29 years of age. Take on Dale Brown and the LSU Tigers. That's the final game, and the winner of that one will get the Duke Blue Devils, barring the movement of tectonic plates. <laughs> and uh, there have been no seismic shocks registered in the last hour. Arizona starting to pull away from Santa Clara. And Rhode Island, Purdue. Very close ball game. Look at this, Western Kentucky and Memphis State. And that's only um, 31 seconds and change remaining in that one. Who do you think is the strongest region? Everyone is weighing in with an opinion. You got one? I would lean towards the region we're in, not because we're here, but uh -huh. the Midwest region with Indiana, Kansas, Duke, uh, Louisville. I'll tell you what, that game, Oklahoma State, Marquette, tomorrow will be an interesting game. Yes. Be competitive. I don't know how far either one of those teams can go, but that's a, a pretty good early round matchup. Xavier, New Orleans. You want to know the final four? Do I want to know the final four? Sure. Your final four? No. A final four. I can give it to you. Here's oh. Lang. I got it on great authority from Joey Meyer's son. Ray okay, Meyer's okay, grandson. yeah. All righty, yeah, we can take a look at that. Or listen to that. Yeah, listen to it, I think. We are in the home, of course, of the DePaul Blue Demons. Here's Hurley for three. Oh, boy. 20 points for Bobby Hurley. Ray Meyer, the dean of coaches from DePaul, his son Joey, the current coach, are in the building, as they say. <laughs> Brian Meyer, Joey's son, went to the computer. He's very serious about this, and he picked out the finalist. Duke is in the final, so is Michigan, so is Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And I so help me, I can't find the other. <laughs> <laughs> now don't leave us hanging like that, Vern. The tension will mount while I find. Anyway, he's got Duke and Michigan playing for the final. And he's got Michigan winning it. That's from Brian Meyer. Well, I'm already on record as saying that I feel Michigan has a great shot at winning it. And if I had to pick a team, I would pick them at this point. Their strength, their experience, their depth, their talent um, all makes them a a good choice for a lot of people. Um, I kind of think how Jalen Rose plays as their point guard is critical to their mm -hmm. success. Um, but I think they've got a great chance of, of winning it all. Seton Hall is a team that's on a roll and playing extremely well. They'll get after it, I guess, later on tonight. 
and never, ever, ever count this man. No, score exactly. Out. Because they know what it takes. And any of the teams you look at that really have a chance to win six straight games have good balance. They defend. They defend extremely well. They've got experience. They've got a nice blend, but they've got balance in terms of what they do offensively and defensively. And I think Seton Hall qualifies on that. Michigan certainly does. Duke is a team that certainly fits that. Indiana, although them not having Allen Henderson at anywhere near 100 percent is certainly something that will hurt their chances of winning at all. Well, we began this night talking about that man, Grant Hills, back in. How much of an effect have you seen from that sprained toe tonight? Well, I tell you what, he's moving extremely well. And because the game has gone like it has, he really probably won't have to go much longer, I would expect. Mike Krzyzewski, although he might keep him on the floor simply to give him some additional work because he's missed so much time. But I would think he would balance that decision with maybe giving him some rest for that sore toe. But I think he's making progress on a daily basis and, mm -hmm. and being able to have a, a rest day tomorrow with probably a light workout uh, certainly has to help him. Cherokee Parks gets both at 67-39, and he will give way to Eric Meek, the sophomore from Escondido, California. And one of the things you talk about, Duke, one of the things we have, have grown used to expecting from them is great depth. It's something they really haven't had this year compared to other, other seasons. That's exactly right, although Marty Clark, who has started some this season, has come off the bench lately and done a pretty good job. Eric Meek is a guy who's given them some quality minutes in terms of rebounding the ball at both ends of the floor when he's been out there. There's Meek. Shot doesn't go. And then Chris Collins has certainly been a nice acquisition. He's actually started started five of the six games that Grant Hill missed and gives them a little more firepower coming off the bench now. Marcus Timmons, a sophomore from Oran, Missouri. Thomas Hill will try and get it back outside. Hurley has it. Fouled by Tyrone Bell, number 23. That's his third foul. And the fifth team foul on yes, Southern Illinois. Well, we talked about the Midwest. Of course, four games played here today. Indianapolis will play on Friday and Sunday. That's where Indiana is in residence. Grant Hill. Mirko Pavlovich with the foul. Rhode Island leading Purdue now in the final minute of the play. Arizona struggling against Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. Here's Chris Collins back in. Grand Hill shoots two. This guy is some kind of player. I talked about it in the first half that he is what I call a stat sheet stuffer supreme as you look at his parents. You notice Calvin that with, uh, with a 25 point lead, they move <laughs> back together. <laughs> there will be peace in the family tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's a little less stressful when the outcome is no longer in doubt. 69 43. I remember seeing Janet Hill at a Georgetown game when Grant was in the ninth grade. And I had known them when Calvin played for the Cowboys uh -huh. back in the 70s. I said, How is Grant? She said, Doing fine. I think he may be a pretty good athlete. Yeah. Well, ninth grade. What an understatement, huh? I told the story last year when he was lucky enough. There's a three pointer by Marty Clark did the uh, Duke Kentucky game the night that Grant Hill was born his dad called me in Dallas Calvin and said got a boy got a boy and I was able to announce it on local mm. television in Dallas Pavlovich for three no Duke will uh, await the winner of the California-Louisiana State game that follows this one by 30 minutes. Well, that California team has been on a roll since Todd Bozeman has taken over. They've won nine of their last ten. 
We've got some young, talented players. Jason Kidd, the outstanding freshman. Lamon Murray. Maybe some folks in the eastern part of the country don't know about him, but he can flat out go, as they say. Well, you touted him to me early yesterday. Mm -hmm. Lusk. Nope. Lusk to the rebound. He is stripped and will shoot. Paul Lusk goes to the free throw line. A young man who transferred from the University of Iowa after his freshman year. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Les? Vern, there's a sentimental story about Paul Lusk. You might be able to notice that on his shoes, he is wearing the initial CMS and the number 40. That's because when he was at Iowa, he roomed with Chris Street, who was tragically killed in a car accident in January. He's transferred a year ago, and he's wearing it to honor him. It was a very tough year for Paul Lusk when Chris Street was killed in that car wreck. He was a roommate, as Leslie said. The University of Iowa sent a plane, as a matter of fact, to pick Paul Lusk up and transport him Back to Iowa City for the funeral. And now the foul call will send on Carr. And that will send Grant Hill back to the free throw line. Eleven forty seven to go in the game. Eleven forty seven remaining in time has been called. Duke winning this. 17,400 plus on hand at the Rosemont Horizon. The third seeded Duke Blue Devils rolling tonight. They jumped out to a huge early lead. Had an 11 0 run that established their supremacy, and they lead 73 45 right now. Yeah, they pretty much had it in neutral since about the 15 minute mark of the first half. Here's Collins for two. Off the feed from Hurley. And Chris Collins has eight points. The lead is 30 at 75-45. Chris Carr, freshman from Pilot Knob, Missouri, another of the large towns where Southern Illinois. <laughs> yeah, they've got about a half dozen guys that come from towns with no more than 5,000 people. Here's Clark for three, no. Eric Neek with the putback. It's good. Now, Marcus Timmons is not in the lineup right now, but he comes from Oran, Missouri, which is a population of 50. Chris Carr said, I come from a virtual metropolis compared to that. <laughs> we have 500 in Pilot Knob. <laughs> Lusk. Nope. That's the kind of night it's been. No luck for Lusk. Hurley. Hello. He just doesn't stop playing, does he? No, never. 79-47. Hurley has 22. Matador D, it's wide open in there, and Hurley to the rack. That may be the first shot that he's taken in the paint. Everything else has been beyond the arc, I think. And he's got 22 points tonight. Gets a rest now. With 10. Oh, the. Bell. Lusk, finally. Ah, oh, good pass. A dandy pass from Bell to Amaya. Threaded the needle and a nice catch. But they haven't had many. Completions in that area. 9:45 to go. 
Amaya becomes the first player for Southern Illinois in double figures. He's got 10 now. 79-49. Here's Blayton, and he's fouled by Lowry. Well, we talked to a few moments ago about the Indianapolis bracket. They play tomorrow. Indiana against Wright State tomorrow night. New Orleans against Xavier. Fascinating matchup to kick it all off. Oklahoma State against Marquette. Mm -hmm. And Louisville, Delaware. Both of those teams, you talk about that Oklahoma State and Marquette matchup, both of those teams hit a little air turbulence late in the season. They had a couple of bumpy games late. Hiccups. <laughs> yeah, hiccups yeah. is a good way of saying it. And um, they'll be looking to get back on the right track tomorrow afternoon. Some folks are touting Louisville. Mm -hmm. I had them earlier in, against Tulane. They lost that game, but they've got some nice pieces. Clifford Rogier, the player of the year in the Metro Conference, has been outstanding. Morton and Minor, solid players. I mean, they've got some good pieces, and they defend, rebound, and run. So there'll be trouble for most teams. Lang with the defensive move, and then Thomas Hill call for the foul down in the knee. And Paul Lusk, a sophomore from New Baden, Illinois, goes to the line. Lusk was uh, young man who started at Iowa's impressions. Rhode Island has defeated Purdue, eight against nine, and they will await for the winner of the North Carolina East Carolina game. You think the uh, noise level for that ball game might be a little loud? <laughs> North and east. <laughs> well, this time Rhode Island was a factor in this tournament. They had another upset. Not that tonight was an upset. They were the higher seed. But that was the year they had that wondrous run and defeated Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Amaya. Oh. Nope. <laughs> that is two thunder dunks from Chris Carr. <laughs> With flair. He punched that one in. One in each half. But uh, no conversation to go with this one. Yeah, I think it's best to be silent when you're being drummed. Cherokee Parks for two. 81-53 with 8.25 to go. Duke will get either California or LSU. Those two teams play here a half an hour after the completion of this game. Earlier today, Kansas outlasted Ball State, and Brigham Young defeated SMU. There's Lusk. He's got eight points. Hey, that should be a pretty good matchup on Saturday. Kansas and BYU. BYU, the tallest team in the country across the board. Kansas, very impressive in the second half of this afternoon's game. Well, in one sense, they were very similar to Duke. They used the long range shot. Mm -hmm. Rex Walters had a wonderful day. That's for two. Cherokee Parks now has 15 points. And we have 7.30 remaining in the ballgame. 83-55. Seven minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the ball game. Duke, 83-55. Championship on CBS. There hasn't been much to B-roll for the Salukis. Down 28. Take a look at Amaya to the goal. No good. And Chris Carr with the flush. One of only a few highlights for the Southern Illinois Salukis That's tonight. A very short reel. Yeah, yeah. Very short. You can put it on a, a very small spool. Collins. Collins for three. He's in double figures with 11. What's the three-point total? I mean, are we still in record territory? 13 of 16 is pretty decent. Percentage-wise, I mean, in terms of volume, that's got to be close to a tournament record as well. It's a darn good average. Oh, my. 13 of 16 from three-point range. Look at what they've done for the game. 
I mean, those aren't awful figures for Southern Illinois. No, they really aren't, but when compared to what Duke has done, that's a huge gap. JoJo Johnson goes to the line. Mike Krzyzewski grew up nine miles from here. His mom is in attendance tonight. And he's got a pretty good job on his hands, not only preparing his team, but keeping himself from being distracted. You know, he's got all the buddies and right. the family here. And this is actually the second time that Mike has brought a team in here. When he was the head coach at Army, they came in and played DePaul. But he's never had a Duke team play at the Rosemont Horizon before. So a very special night for him. Mm -hmm. Pavlovich gets the uh, field goal. He's got eight points for the night. And the foul is on JoJo Johnson. Well, that's a roll of Krzyzewski's in case you've wondered what <laughs> one looks like. <laughs> a row of them. There's uh, his mom is in the lower right hand side. No, nope, we're going to go to the right. His wife, Mickey, is in the blue to the left hand side. Now, looking at her, you couldn't tell what the score is here. Nope. Daughter, and there's his mom, and his mom is thinking about Canasta. She knew it all along. Eighty-eight fifty-eight. Well, it's been a low-stress evening for the Blue Devils and the coaching staff. It started Clark in the first half when they jumped out twenty-nine to eight, and there really wasn't much doubt from that point on. And they lead it now, eighty-eight fifty-eight. That's been pretty much a gimme from that point on. Lowry is fouled by Antonio Lang. His third, team eighth. So it's Duke against Kansas and LSU or California. Those two teams will meet 30 minutes after this one is done. Blakeney and Hurley are going to come in, and Collins will get a rest. And Doug Collins. Well, I imagine that with all the success Doug has had as a as a player, as a coach, as a commentator, I mean, there can't be anything that even comes close to being able to sit up there and watch his son be a contributing part of a championship caliber college team. I don't want to overdo it, but I go back now to, to Calvin Hill and, and, and his thoughts when Grant helped Duke win a national championship. And Calvin said to have the athletic career I did. Mm -hmm. And then to have a son play as well as he did. Yeah. I am truly twice blessed. Exactly. And the same could certainly be said for the Collins family. 88-58. Mm -hmm. Five forty two to go. Hasn't had a big game tonight. Actually in jeopardy of having his double figure scoring streak stop. Thomas Hill. You know, we were talking about fathers and being athletes. Thomas Hill's dad, Rich Heron, was reminding us last mm -hmm. night that Thomas Hill's father was a great track star. That's right. A heck of a hurdler who went to Arkansas State. That's for three, and it's no good. And it's 91-58 with 5.27 to go. Blakely, Clark, Thomas Hill, Meek, and Hurley on the floor now for the Blue Devils. They're going to get Marcus Timmons with this foul. That's his third. Southern's personal 40, Marcus Timmons is third. The team's 11. You'd have to wonder how much longer Hurley and Thomas Hill are going to stay out there. Well, I was looking at the bench, and you think, well, when is Krzyzewski going to send a lot of subs in? But there aren't a lot of subs. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's only dressing 11. And that goes back to the lack of depth that this mm -hmm. team has. They do have rather typically an outstanding recruiting class coming in next year. Thomas Hill misses the free throw. There's the there's the bench. Tony Woods, a sophomore, the last fellow on the bench, had shoulder surgery, so he's out for the season. Both free throws missed. They may have a better average from three-point range than they do from the free throw line. Yeah, the way they've shot it, that's not an exaggeration at all. Blakeney. 91-58, under five minutes to go. Clark for two, got it. <laughs> and he knew the minute it left okay. his fingertips. Yeah, you know when it's going down. Chris Carr gets the basket. He's got eight. Hurley for three. Oh, my gracious. 25 points for Bobby Hurley. 14 of 17. Man, what a performance. That's... Johnson gets it. Pavlovich, the runner, no good. Under the four-minute mark. Blakeney. And they are 14 of 18 now. Santa Clara has come back on top of Arizona. Mm. Arkansas wins big. Rhode Island knocks off Purdue. Tulane upset Kansas State. Western Kentucky. And later tonight, Seton Hall hosting Tennessee State. Bobby Hurley, 6 of 7 from three point range, 25 points. I think he's done for the night. And he did plenty of damage. And Rich Heron is going to go to his bench as well and congratulate his seniors. The Salukis will wind up this season with a 23 and 10 record. Tyrone Bell, a senior. Ashraf Amaya, a senior. But uh, for the most part, a young team. Clark gets the free throw to drop. And on the court right now, number five, Brian Piper. Paul Lusk, number 13. We'll get the rest of the lineup here in a second. Clark gets them both. The Blue Devils have 98 points. Here's Duke hitting 67%, including 14 of 18 from three-point range just under the NCAA record. 25 points off turnovers and a 38-point lead with 345 remaining. Here's Brian Piper, freshman from Ohio, Illinois. Talking about an oxymoron. Really? Lusk guarded by Collins. And number 54, Scott Rosinski takes the shot. SIU will control. Chris Carr coming back into the lineup now, number 43. And Marcus Timmons will get a rest. Brzezinski will inbound. De Silva is also in there, as is Lusk and Brian Piper. Carr gets the basket. He's got 10 points. 98-62. Off the hand of Lang, SIU gets it. Next game here will be LSU versus California. A lot of you will be seeing East Carolina versus North Carolina. Others watch Tennessee State Seton Hall. And still others will watch Missouri against Temple. 
Piper for three. Nope. 2.45 remaining. Marty Clark. Good defense. Chris Carr. Brzezinski. Nope. And that ball goes out. In just a moment, many of you are going to go see Arizona Santa Clara, the finish of that one. We look at the end of this play. Check out this block and catch by Chris Carr. He's had a pretty productive game off the bench for the Salukis. Scored in double digits and showing you there how to use that extra sleeve length. Blakeney rejected by De Silva. Meek. 162. And right now, let's go back to New York and Jim Nance. All right, Burns. So Eric Meek gets Duke to 100 points. We're right now going to squeeze in a look at a shocker developing in the West. Arizona, the two seed, trailing by three to Santa Clara. Arizona with Stoudemire looking to find Mills. Mills is going to take a three. No rebound. Taken down by Woolery, gets it to Nash. And he's fouled by Geary with 31 seconds to go. The Broncos of Santa Clara, seeded 15, looking for the second time in NCAA history to knock off a number two seed. Last year, a loss to number 14 East Tennessee State when Arizona was a three seed. Right now, they are looking at a loss to a number 15 seed. Nash, the freshman, makes the free throw. This is a game where Santa Clara jumped all over Lute Olsen's club to begin this game, led by 12, then were outscored 25 to nothing, trailed by 13. But never gave up, Larry Thomas. Oh, they didn't. And Nash has got ice water in his veins. Those are two big ones, huh? Big ones. He's gone from being a freshman to a sophomore. Two free throws. And that is not something that Dick Davey wanted. A foul with 27 seconds to go. A look around the country coming up next. East Carolina, North Carolina playing their opening game. LSU and Cal should be a good one. And Larry and I will be here for Missouri and Temple. Seton Hall opening their NCAA play against Tennessee State. Stoudemire will shoot two. His club down five. Arizona's got to score these two points here with the clock stop. Go to some sort of full court press. Go after the basketball, hoping that if there is slight contact, the officials won't call it when they have a chance for a steal. But nevertheless, go after the ball to not allow a lot of time to take off the clock so they get another possession. Arizona has made one of their last 15 field goals. Stoudemire rolls in the free throw. It is a one possession game at 60 to 57. Eisenrich will inbound. Gets it into Nash. Nash is fouled immediately, and if that's Reeves, he's gone. Oh. Nash can't get to the free throw line fast enough. <laughs> so back to that ice water. He wants the ball. He wants to get fouled. He made a terrific move. He faked away and cut hard to the basketball. There was no denying him the ball had inbounds pass. Steve is from Victoria, British Columbia. The assistants told us yesterday they had heard about this kid. They went to check him out. They watched him play for about 10 minutes, and they started looking around the gym going, like, is anybody else here? There wasn't. And he came to Santa Clara. You hear about those stories, but not too often. You know, the recruiting network in our country is so very, very good, but there's one that slipped through the cracks. Make some balls. And Arizona will use their final timeout.
Larry Farmer at the John Huntsman Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah. A major upset brewing. Number 15, Santa Clara, about to take out the Arizona Wildcats, barring a miracle finish. 20 seconds to go in the game. And Woolery is called with a foul running into Geary. Reggie Geary setting a screen. John Woolery ran into him. And the Cats get a chance to score with the clock stopped. Woolery and Steve Nash have got to communicate on that. That was a guard-to-guard -guard high screen outside the three-point line. And the easy thing to do on that is just to switch. So maybe defensively you don't have the perfect matchup, but you don't charge, and you still got the ball outside the three-point line. And viewers waiting for Seton Hall. We will have that game coming up against Tennessee State. They are just underway. We'll be taking you to that in just about 18 seconds or so. Right now, Dick Davies Club looking to pull off the upset of the opening day of action. Coach Luke, that time, reaching into his bag of tricks. He's got a player that he does not want on that free throw line. And so he brings in Dylan Rigdon. And the junior will shoot the free throw. He's got two. That's tough position to be in coming off the bench. The lead is five. Ray O's looking to come back in. Rigdon makes the second. Reggie Gear, a freshman that time, he, he drew the, the charge, hurt his arm on the play, but you don't know if he was really designed for him to step up and shoot those free throws. And there's the foul given immediately by McLean. He gave it to Steve Nash, though. Nash has been more than equal to the task at the free throw line. Look at him, he's up there waiting. Don't you love it? I mean, he just gets it in high gear. He gets up to that free throw line. He wants that basketball. Arizona at the line for Santa Clara number 11, Steve Nash. Nash shoots two. Nash with eight points, six of them from the line. That didn't touch iron. Freshman will drive you crazy, won't they? Oh, what a big time performance at the strike. Stoudemire, nobody home on the pass. Now Mills, a major league three. And the Wildcats get their final timeout. It's a three-point game with eight seconds to go. Ball, or at least attempt to. They throw it long. Nash is open. And he's fouled immediately by Stoudemire with seven seconds to go. Interesting switch that time. Mills had Nash if he went to the basket, but he faked and released. And for viewers around the country looking for Seton Hall and Tennessee State and North Carolina and East Carolina, we'll be getting you out there shortly, but history is being made here as the number 15 seed Broncos of Santa Clara. Oh, he finally missed one. Now, this is the critical one. It's a three-point game. Santa Clara trying to send the Wildcats of Arizona home. Oh, that one's off, too. Loose ball. Bob's got it. And he's fouled with five seconds to go. The chance was there. The game immediately calling Steve Nash over second. Don't worry about it. We would not be in this position if it wasn't for you. Now get out there and play some defense. Now it will be Kevin Dunn, another freshman at the free throw line. Dunn, a 47% free throw shooter over the course of the season. And 
again, here comes the critical one as it's a three-point game. He needs to take a deep breath. He's going to remember this shot for the rest of his life. Put it right over the front of the rim. Missed it. Rebound Stoudemire. Arizona's got a chance. Stoudemire. No. Tipped out. saying so long from the John M. Huntsman Center where the final score was Santa Clara 64, Arizona 61. Illinois, Vanderbilt, and now Santa Clara advanced to Saturday. The Cinderella story is alive and well in Salt Lake City. The Chevrolet players of the game, Pete Eisenrich for Santa Clara and Chris Mills from Arizona. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Folks, you have just witnessed one of the most stunning upsets in the history of the NCAA basketball tournament. Cinderella has arrived at the ball night one in the 93 NCAAs. Now, coming up next, East Carolina and North Carolina. That game has started Carolina. North Carolina Tar Heels lead 11 to 4. We'll be sending some of you out there. Others will be going to the southeast where Seton Hall leads 14 to 8 in early action. For those of you expecting LSU in California or Missouri, Temple will give you bonus coverage of that Seton Hall Tennessee State game. And we're going to send all of you out. We'll dispatch you to those games when we continue on the road to the Final Four after this word from your local station.